dear students we are back to the class of geometric design we have been discussing about module 2 wherein we have talked about the cross sectional elements which are common or which are specific in nature towards the end we started discussing about the road furniture if you look at the previous interaction and try to memorize that what we have done in that we closed our discussion on the pedestrian crossing facilities and then we talked about the service roads the design aspects related to those and towards the end of that interaction we had some idea about the type of the road furniture which needs to be provided and then we did talk about that various markings which are going to be there in terms of uh, longitudinal markings or the junction markings the categorization of that was looked at now in today's interaction we are going to talk about the longitudinal markings now if you remember when we talked about these longitudinal markings towards the end of our previous interaction at that time we said that these longitudinal markings can be of different types they can be in terms of the center line they can be in terms of the lane markings or this may be edge markings there may be markings related to the no overtaking zone or the markings can also come in terms of the specific facilities which may be related to cycles or any other type of a mode for which exclusive facility has been provided so we are going to look at these different type of longitudinal markings one by one in today's interaction now when we talk about these longitudinal markings we are basically referring to IRC 35 which provides all of these information now these are the markings which are going to be provided in the longitudinal direction of our movement so we may be moving in this direction this is the carriageway which is quite wide in nature and therefore there is a possibility of having more than two lanes two lanes or even a single lane depending on that what is this width when you are looking at these longitudinal markings which are being provided in the direction of our movement that means the traffic is being moving in this direction or we have one other vehicle which is moving in this direction so the markings are going to be provided in this form or they are going to be provided here or they are going to be provided just along at this level so there can be different type of markings which can be there if the road is quite wide then there is a possibility that we can provide some other type of activities on that say the parking can be provided on that road or in that case if you have a this is the curb side and we are providing a parking on this particular road like this then this is going to be marked by way of a certain lines and there may be a possibility to create a safety zone by way of providing another line at the back of it so when we are looking at these things what we found is that all of these markings which are going to be provided they are going to have a certain width w they are going to have a certain length l and then when we look at the subsequent markings like this then there is going to be a gap between those markings unless it until this is a case where we have a continuous strip being provided now when we are having these type of strips or the broken lines they will always be having some color and in general the color which is being used is white in nature but there are going to be some specific conditions in which the color may not be white and that is what is being defined here which clearly tells that if there are certain restrictions obstructions encroachments objects which are going to create a situation where the hazardous condition may arise in those cases we need to change the color and there the color can be yellow in nature so we have the parking restrictions if we say that no vehicle needs to be parked here so if we have this line being provided and we want to say that the vehicles are not allowed to be parked we probably tell that to the drivers by way of the markings and that can be yellow in color or there can be an approach to an obstruction so we need to define that there is an obstruction and you should be careful otherwise you are going to hit it and there can be a combination of uh, say the 
white, yellow or the yellow and black colors depending on what intensity of that is going to be there. The overtaking zones which are not being allowed. So, if we are not allowing the overtaking then also we need to talk about this and then there can be a continuous center line which again is going to tell some restriction. So, in that sense if we try to look at that the way in which the lease lines can be provided they can be broken lines, they can be solid lines, they can be double solid lines or they can be a combination of the broken and solid lines. And when we are looking at these then what these are going to inform us is that if this is a broken line then it is permissive in nature that means it allows some movements across that particular line also. But if it is a solid line then it is quite restrictive and double solid lines means it is a more restriction is being enforced at that particular location. And when we say the combination of broken and a solid line that means we have a the solid this type of a broken lines but at the other side we have this continuous line. It means there is a restriction on this side but the restriction is not there on the other side of this particular line. And in that respect when you look you can find out that we can have the white or we can have the yellow color lines. So, here this is a continuous white line, this one is a broken line, here there are yellow line and a, a continuous one where they have a broken one also. But usually you will not find this as much we can have this type of a situation or there can be a situation where the two lines are being used or the two lines are being used in combination of the continuous and the broken lines. They can also be provided in association with the other markings on the carriageway say here we are talking about the path being provided to the pedestrians. So, in the combination of that it is being provided or there may be a, a specific feature in terms of the transition in the width of facility and there also these type of markings can be there subjective the restrictions have to be imposed then that can be yellow in color if we have white in color under emergency then the violation to this particular site can be there. So, when we have this idea that what type of lines can be provided and uh, what particular fashion or colors these can be provided let us start with the first one that is the most prominent is the center line. So, if we have uh, any road and on this road we have two lanes. So, these two lanes are going to be demarcated by way of the center line and therefore, we are going to have the markings at the center profile of this particular carriageway. So, these are going to be there on undivided two way roads. So, we are segregating the movements by way of the provision of these particular lines and this can be broken line or this can be a continuous line also. But they are going to be in some cases where this particular line is not exactly at the center of the profile. Say we have a carriageway width transition. So, you are going to have a change from a two lane system and say you are going to convert it into a three lane system or four lane system. Now, when you are doing it slowly and slowly until and unless you have gone into a four lane system, there is going to be a transition zone where you will find that your center line is not exactly getting to on the basis of the lanes which should be there. Or if you are on a turning, so you are coming to a particular intersection and there what you found is a separate lane is being provided. So, now the turning left turning can be done here a one lane has been additionally being provided it makes it odd. So, if odd number of lanes are there obviously, you are not going to have the center line as such. So, everything is going to be off center or in a case that you are going to have uh, even numbers of lanes, but one lane is being taken for parking. In that case again now you do not have the center line because you are left with again the odd numbers in this case or you are moving on a part curve and when you are moving on a curve you are going to have extra widening and because of the extra widening what you will find is that the center lines which are there from the two sides they are not overlapping with each other in this central portion and there is going to be a gap between these two center lines. So, that is a short of a shift which is going to be there and this will also happen in the case of the curves which are quite sharp. Now, when you are talking about this uh, center line and when you have the roads which are having different widths of the carriageway, 
if the width is less than 5.5 meters then the center line is not being provided because in this case the movement which is being provided in the bidirectional form that is being allowed on the basis of not the 3.5 meters lane width but it is less than that and depending on the opportunities that action is going to be there. Now when you talk about the urban roads in the case of which if it is less than 4 lanes or there are 4 lanes but with parking then in that they can be provided as broken lines which are 150 mm wide. So, that is what we are saying that we have a broken line like this. So, this is 150 mm, they are 3 meter long. So, this is 3 meters and then there is going to be a gap of 4.5 meters with respect to the another marking being done. But when you are under the restricted conditions or the hazardous situations are there then, then this gap is going to be reduced and this is reduced to 3 meters on those cases like curves or approaches to intersections. In the case of undivided roads where at least 2 traffic lanes per direction are there in that case if you are going with a solid line then that solid line is going to be 150 mm wide subjective that it is a single one solid line, but if you have two solid lines. So, this is one line and there is another line being placed parallel to that. So, in that case this width is going to be 100 mm and this is also going to be 100 mm and wherein the spacing is also 100 mm. So, it has been changed from 150 to 100 and this uniformity of that. Now, the same things have been depicted here what you can see is that this is the center line of the road and on that center line of the road we have the markings which are 3 meters long 4.5 meters having a gap between the two markings and the width is going to be there. So, that width is say 150 mm here. If you look at the another one here what you are being shown is the parallel system. So, this parallel marking system is there and therefore, everything that is the width of the marking as well as the gap between the two markings is same and that is 100 mm. So, that is how it is being provided. Now, in combination with the center line depending on that if you have more number of lanes that is always better to define the lane. So, you have lane 1 and lane 2 with respect to the center line of this carriageway. So, when you have this type of a demarcation then it allows the vehicles to move in their specific lane as far as possible. So, it can bring in the lane discipline also under the constraint conditions you may find that that lane discipline is not there, but basically these are being marked so as to bring in that. Now, what are the locations where these traffic lane lines are going to be marked? They are marked at intersections or the approaches to the different structures or intersections in the congested areas at hazardous locations. In the case of one way streets because when you are having one way street there is no traffic coming from the other direction and there is no need of providing a center line in this case all the markings along the longitudinal direction they can be the lane markings only or they are also being provided near the pedestrian crossings base if we have a pedestrian crossing like this. So, there is going to be a stop line and then we have the markings so as to define that in which particular lane the vehicles can come and stop and that gives an order. So, that the pedestrians do not find themselves in a hazardous situation. Now, when we are looking at uh, these type of markings and they have been provided say in an urban area then in that urban area they can be broken lines which are 100 mm wide long is 1.5 meters with a gap of 3 meters. So, that is what is being shown here we have 1.5 meter long marking with a gap of 3 meters and that is the way it is being done, but if it is a constraint condition then we are reducing it by 1.5 meters. So, that is the way we are doing it in the other cases too, but when we are talking about the rural areas the highways which are there and you are going to put these lane markings there then the values are being doubled that means you are going to have a length of 3 meters and a gap of 6 meters being provided 
and under the constraint conditions the gaps are going to be reduced say to 4.5 meters. Now, when you are talking about these lane markings and there is a possibility that you are coming from a particular direction and you are approaching an intersection. Now, when you are approaching an intersection, so you have the center line markings. So, this is the center line of the road. So, these center line markings are going to be there in this form and then there are lane markings being provided, so which defines that how many lanes are there. Now, what happens in this case is that when you are talking about these with respect to the intersection area, though we are going to talk about it separately too, our this center line marking is going to stop here at the tangential line of the other crossing road, whereas the lane markings can be continued in this form. So, they defines that the, this is the area through which you can keep moving and that is the way these are being provided. Now, another important thing which is there is the so far the facility is wide enough, the vehicles are able to cross the slow moving vehicles and those passing facilities or passing requirements or the locations are there. So, there is no issue. The issue arises when the drivers are not in a position to overtake and therefore, we need to demarcate certain locations or stretches as a no overtaking zone. Now, when you are talking about this, if you look at the photographs which have been shown at the bottom, what you can find is that in this photograph, the width is being there of a carriageway which is probably not so high and looking at maybe some constraints, it defines that by way of the marking, the two continuous solid lines yellow in color defines that the overtaking should not be done in this particular patch. Now, reasons can be different, say it is a passing through a forest area and there is a possibility of the crossing of the animals on this particular one and you started overtaking with a higher speed and you can hit an animal which is just started crossing without understanding your speed. So, in such situations we have to look at it. Say you talk about the another one where a curve is being shown and when this curve is shown and it is a terrain which can be dangerous though there are crash barriers being provided on the valley side maybe. So, in this case also it says that kindly do not overtake be in your lane and once you have negotiated this curve then only probably you are going to get an opportunity to cross the slow moving vehicles. So, in that sense if we try to look at it says that they should be provided on the summit curves. The summit curves means you are going up and then you are coming down. So, you are going to have a curve like this. So, here when you are moving uh, on this direction in this form. So, there may be a possibility that you are not being able to see what is happening on the other side on the basis of the gradients which is 1 in n. So, we need to restrict the overtaking in these particular areas or maybe on the horizontal curves or two or three lane highways where certain restrictions are there, we need to do that. And these are being done by way of using the solid yellow line. This solid yellow line is going to be placed along the center line of the alignment or the carriageway which is being provided. And then it is going to be say 100 mm wide. And if you are going to use two lane system, then it is 100 mm plus 100 mm and a gap of 100 mm there. So, that means that will become 300 mm being provided. But if you have the highways which are having more than three lanes, then usually the overtaking issues are not there and we are not providing the no overtaking zone markings in that area. So, here we can see that there are few things which can be there. You have a horizontal curve and on this horizontal curve, whatever is this line being shown that can be a yellow line continuous in nature which can be a single line which can be a double line. If we see the other case where the barrier lines have been shown what it tries to tell is that if you are coming from this direction certain restrictions are there in this area, but when you are coming from this direction then the restrictions are here in this area and as you move ahead of that then those restrictions have been eased out. So, these lines which are being shown here, again they are going to be placed in terms of a continuous yellow color lines. If you look at the third case here being shown, 
a straight profile is there, but still there may be certain restrictions and due to which what you found is a combination of the lines at the center. One is a continuous line, another one is uh, being provided as a uh, broken line, but then the continuous line is there in certain stretches in the opposite directions and that defines that if you are in this area, the restrictions are imposed. If you are in this area also, the restrictions are being imposed. But as soon as you started moving in the other areas, so here the restrictions are not there. So, by way of simply providing the lines, you are just educating the drivers that what is happening ahead or at this particular section and accordingly they should behave. Now, when you talk about these overtaking zone markings, there are certain specific things which needs to be taken care of. The very first thing is that when you are talking about it and we are providing it say on a horizontal curve and you have a curve like this and therefore, there is going to be a center line here at this portion in this form and this form. So, this center line is going to divide it into two parts. The one carriageway is defined as the in inner side of the carriageway and another one can be defined as the outer side of the carriageway. Now, when the vehicles are moving in this zone due to the centrifugal force which is acting and the provision of extra wedding etcetera which needs to be taken care of which we will be discussing when we will take up the highway alignment section. So, here what may happen is that uh, we need to ensure the safety and when we are trying to ensure the safety one thing which is being taken care of is that what is the ratio of E i with E o that means the width on the inner side and the width on the outer side. And this width on the inner side and width on the outer side is dependent on the radius r. And if the radius r is more than 60 meters, then in that case we can provide E i is equals to E naught. But if it is less than 60 meters, then in that case the width on the inner side is going to be higher as compared to the width on the outer side and that is being defined by these particular ratios being given here. So, this is how the lines which are going to be provided and the widths which are going to be provided in these type of zones has to be taken care of. Now, when we are doing all of these things and we and we said that the center line is going to be a somewhat eccentric when we are talking about a horizontal curve because of the curve elements. Now, what may happen is that there is going to be a gap between the two lines. So, you have the two lines like this and this gap can create an island of 600 mm and this island of 600 mm should be hatched. And when we hatch this particular island of 600 mm that defines that the vehicles are not allowed to get into this particular area, they should keep safe of this particular area either on the inner side or on the outer side unless it until there is an emergency then only probably they can utilize this otherwise not. Now, when we are doing it and we are going to hatch it then what is the specification which is being defined that says that these can be inclined lines which are 100 to 150 mm thick and they are going to be placed at certain spacing. So, this is a spacing which we are talking which can be 4 to 6 meters say if we are talking about a speed of 65 kilometers per hour then this one is being provided. If the, we are increasing the speed then the these uh, spacings are going to increase. If the speeds are going to be less then these are also further going to be reduced. So, uh, that is the way we are going to provide this particular hatching area. Now, when we are looking at this overtaking zone markings another important thing which needs to be looked at is the combination of three points one is the 85th percentile speed another one is MVD which is minimum visibility distance and the third one is WSD which is defined as warning side distance and you, you can see the values are there where the warning side distance values are higher than the MVD values. Now, where we are going to mark this no overtaking zone markings first of all it says that if the side distance which is available if it is less than the minimum visibility distance MVD then these zone markings should be done. And when we are doing these zone markings and we are trying to look at the visibility aspect 
then the visibility aspect is being taken care of by way of the height of uh, uh, the object and the height of the object here is being considered as 1.05 meters. So, if you remember in the case of side distances, we talked about the heights of object as 0.15 meter or 1.2 meters depending on what particular side distance we were talking there. So, when we are looking at this, let us see that how these are going to be marked. So, this is a, a straight section here, there is another straight section on the other side and in the center we have a horizontal curve. The vehicles are obviously moving in this direction and going this way or the vehicles are moving in this direction and it is a two lane road system being provided. When you are on this straight section probably there is no issue of a side distance and the side distance is being available as we defined E1 in terms of the MVD. Now, what we try to do is that when we start moving on this particular section and we have the value of MVD, say let us mark a point here and from this point we mark another point and the distance between these two is MVD. Now, if this is available, it means the section is fine. Now, let us mark again another point and this is another MVD and if again the visibility of the two successive points is there, then that means the section is good enough. And this is what we keep going when we are moving ahead along the curve and we will come across a location, say a location like this where this was the last section of MVD where the points were visible to each other. And as soon as we moved ahead of this, then this visibility was not there, it means the restrictions has been there. So, now what we have got is this point as well as the other point. Now, with respect to this point, now we are going back and we are talking about the warning side distance and we mark that warning side distance whatever the distance is going to be there and this is probably the location where we come. So, from this location to this location now we are going in terms of uh, the continuous line. Now, where this line is going to stop is the next thing to be taken a decision. Now, we keep going ahead and we will again find that we have got a location where if we talking about the MVD again, then these two points, the extreme points of the MVD, they are becoming visible. So, that is the first lap after non-visibility. So, this one was the last lap and this is the first lap after non-visibility. So, as soon as you have got these points here, now the last point which is there is becomes the point up to which the markings needs to be done from this direction. So, as to define that the overtaking should not be done here. And the same thing is to be exercised from the other side and that is how the no overtaking markings are being done. Now, let us talk about the edge line or the border line markings and these edge line and border line markings they are quite important so as to ensure the safety. So, main purpose is to ensure the safety and another one is to demarcate the objects. So, what you can see is here that if we have a shoulder which is being paved and it is of the same texture as of the main carriageway, then the shoulder needs to be defined by way of these markings. So, you have a, a road and then a shoulder is there. So, here this is going to be an edge marking so as to define that this is shoulder and this is the carriageway. This needs to be done in advance or near the narrow bridges or on the sharp curves or where the obstructions are close enough. So, the hazardous situations may arise. So, whatever is the object is there all along the object this needs to be provided. It may be any circular or longitudinal whatever the condition is. If the width transitions are there then also we should go and provide these things or there is a lot of traffic on a two or the three lane roads or there are possibilities in that area due to environmental conditions the fog or mist is going to be there in the winter. So, we need to identify the or demarcate the edges of the carriageway. So, the safety of the vehicles can be ensured. So, this is one another thing being done. But in these cases wherever we are talking about all of these things, they should be reflective in nature. If they are reflective in nature, then you will be able to understand that where they are being provided. Now, when you are looking at this, then these are provided on more than two lane carriageways. They are continuous lines and these continuous lines are having widths 
but then these widths are being defined based on the conditions. So, conditions are what? If it is a multi-lane highway with a median then this is 150 mm wide. If it is an expressway then it is 200 mm wide. If the carriageway is less than 7 meters then it is only 100 mm wide and they are being placed at certain distance from the edge. So, if my carriageway is like this, so this is the edge. So, this is going to provide it somewhere here. So, the gap which we are talking here is 150 mm in this case. But when you are having a median and say a median has been provided in the center of this profile, then in that case also so as to demarcate the median these edge markings needs to be done. In that edge markings then they should not be at a distance less than 200 mm from the face of the curve stone. Now, previously what we talked was that when we are talking about the center line and you are approaching an intersection then the center line is not being taken care forward. Then we talked about the traffic lane lines we said that they are going to be taken forward. But here in the case of uh, these edge lines or border lines they are also not being taken forward at uh, an intersection. So, we have to stop it at the tangential line of the crossing. Uh, I already said that they should be reflective in nature. So, here you can see that some of the cases are being shown where this one is the edge line which is being provided at a distance away from the edge of the paved carriageway which is provided and that is what we said that it should be 150 mm. Here you can see another case which defines that the vehicle should not just go beyond these particular lines and that is where this is a wrong way of taking the vehicle whereas the vehicle should be clear of these particular lines. And here another thing is being shown in terms of a yellow colored line and this yellow colored line defines that there are certain restrictions and the vehicles are not supposed to be parked or stand or wait in this particular area. So, that is uh, the information it is trying to give to the drivers. Here you can see that there is a median here and at the median it is being demarcated the curve is being marketed by way of the edge line. So, this distance we have talked about as 200 mm or more than that. Now, one other specific aspect is the warning lines and warning lines again it is trying to define a condition where there is going to be some hazardous situation and safety is a prominent thing and that needs to be informed to the driver. And that is the locations remains more or less the same as we discussed previously. What are those locations? They are like horizontal and vertical curves where the visibilities have a problem, they are hazardous locations, sharp curves, intersections or obstructions where the side distance is though more than the minimum visibility distance, but it is less than the warning sight distance. If these are the conditions which are there, then these warning lines needs to be provided. And these warning lines again they are broken lines, but these broken lines they are a set of seven lines. And these set of seven lines are being provided along say the center line or the lane marking whatever are there on that particular pavement and that is why the width of these markings they are going to be the same as the width of either the center line or the traffic lane. But when we are looking at how to define that these are the warning lines for that what is being done is that in the case of two lane roads we just reverse the length versus gap. So, previously we talked about 1.5 meter long with the 3 meter gap or 3 meter long with a 4.5 meter gap and all, all those things. Now, here we are reversing it, we are having the lengths which are more than the gap. So, that is reversal when it is being done that is going to define that these are the warning lines. In the case of multi-lane carriageways, they are being defined as 3 meter long with a 3 meter gap. It means again and again successively these lines are coming they are defining that you are reaching a hazardous situation and therefore control the speeds or look around to see that what type of hazards and objects are going to be there. They are also provided at mid block sections in the case of urban areas or river developments or the locations where the visibilities are problem or the center line or lane line they are reduced a lot in all of these cases if uh, we are looking at then we have to go for it. 
So, with this we close our interaction today and uh, we are going to interact again on the pavement markings. We will be starting maybe the junction markings in our next interaction till then thank you and bye.